that he is. Praise God. Yes. <clears throat> and um, we're certainly happy to be with you on this beautiful day in Florida. Florida is indeed blessed of the Lord to have the weather we have. A beautiful weather. A wonderful winter weather in the state enjoys. And uh, we want to pray for our northern neighbors all along the seaboard and the coastline and that there will be um, farewell 17 deaths to, um, so there's sorrow and families in this last storm that came across the nation and it's still there in a good measure and um, we want to pray for Butch and Carol that they'll get back home <clears throat> they're trying to get back they've been snowed in in North Carolina and uh, we want to see them back home, Butch and Carol Del Higgin, yes. and pray for them. And then we want to remember Sister Mary Gay's services. Uh, they changed it. They called me back at a Brown Funeral Home. Said first Friday, the first uh, at 1 p.m., the 29th of January. But they now moved it to the 28th on Thursday. Well, you take note of that, and it will be at um, 1 o'clock at Brown and Sons Home on 26th Street West, at the corner of uh, 57th, I believe it is, and right by the college there, uh, State College of Florida, right in the corner. That's their home. They have two homes, one in 43rd. But this one, the Mary's services will be 1 p.m., and Sister Mary Gay is one of our dearly beloved, and we all feel, I feel, um, uh, she's been under my ministry for 40 odd years and more. And I have loved this sister in the Lord. We have loved this sister in the Lord, my wife and I, the church. And I look down today and see that vacancy down by Teresa there. and. Uh, I know that that would be filled by Sister Mary. Uh, she was very faithful. She came when she physically was not able to come anymore. But she came. And we'll miss that uh, soul, but we do rejoice that we are sure she is with the Lord. We are confident that Mary is with the Lord. And to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. The book of... Um, Paul's writings tells us, and so uh, we want to um, rejoice that she is with the Lord, or we will miss her as we miss the other hoary-headed saints. We're losing a lot of them. Uh, they're going, uh, the assembly has grown older in recent years, and we need to pray that young people uh, will start coming into the assembly and we want to nourish our young people and, and pray for them, help them in every way because uh, a great horde of young people came in to this church 40 some years ago and that's why the church has sustained itself over these um, 55 years of my ministry here is because in the 60s and the 70s young people were coming into the church and um, we want to pray again that the youth uh, generation will uh, find the will, the desire. We want to do everything we can as elders and pastors and teachers and examples in the church and witnesses uh, to witness to our young people. And we want to reach out for young people. We want to let them feel that this is a church where they're welcome and they can grow here and they can help us to grow here. And uh, we'll nourish them. We'll We'll appreciate them, um, as well as the older saints, of course. Uh, but we want to pray that God will uh, touch young people of our generation for this uh, church right here on 7th Avenue. And there'll be a great uh, multitude of them come again, as they did in those years of the 60s, the 70s, uh, early 70s, and the, even the early 80s. Uh, we had those uh, coming in. Uh, flooding us at times. So we want to do something to uh, let the Lord be pleased with us that we can reach them again, reach that generation again as we reach that generation. And now they're going on to be with the Lord. And so 
we'll point your attention to that to pray. Uh, then um, we want to remember, uh, as I said, her service and the viewing will be Wednesday. Of course, that's our night of worship here, but you can correlate it. You can make it work that you can be in Wednesday night worship and be at the viewing also. Just leave the viewing and come to church. Uh, the viewing is from 5 to 8 at Brown and Son Home on 26, Wednesday night, Wednesday evening, and the service is Thursday, so uh, you can be there early and uh, witness uh, to the loved ones and comfort them, the son, the daughter, and then come right on to the church for the service. Uh, you don't need to miss the service because of that reason. And then uh, I want to, uh, I want to all the department heads of the uh, various uh, departments for the convention, I want to meet with you Monday night. Uh, we're going to um, put aside the Bible study that we normally have at six o'clock, but that's all of you that are working in various places or various groups. Um, and uh, be here with me at 6, and then I believe we're still needing uh, men and young men to uh, work the parking lot. So is that right, Brother Matthew? Is that right? I need three. You need three. And so by, uh, because after we meet with the department heads uh, getting ready for the convention, uh, then I'll meet with the ushers and parking and transportation uh, following that. At, uh, the first meeting will be at 6 o'clock, and the other meeting will be at uh, 7.30. Uh, you, you are going to fill those three vacancies he needs. You men, you men of the church, young men of the church, step forward, uh, take your place, and fill those uh, parking uh, places uh, that we need, uh, because there's a lot of people coming uh, uh, from the East Coast. I was in Miami uh, Friday night and a meeting there with Brother Gesme and the Assembly, uh, Gospel Assembly there in Miami. And they had 26 signed up to come to the convention as of uh, Friday night. And there's more signing up today. Uh, and we had a great meeting there and encouraged them in Miami. And then we went to Fort Lauderdale and was there in service at uh, uh, St. Fuller's at uh, 11 o'clock Saturday morning. And there's people coming from that assembly in Fort Lauderdale. And then we went back to Miami last night. There was a meeting there of about eight churches and uh, around 11 to 12 pastors. And uh, many of them are coming to the convention. We would be flooded on the East Coast, but uh, I didn't know when I scheduled our convention this year, I moved it up earlier. We normally have it in March. Um, for years we've had it in March, and for some reason, I went off on one of those wings of mine and uh, scheduled it uh, uh, two weeks early, uh, thinking we might get a break on motel rooms, uh, but uh, there's a, they're celebrating the Jubilee year of the gospel of the kingdom message in Haiti uh, at the same date we're having our convention. And so I didn't know that when I scheduled our meeting. Uh, so some of those pastors and people uh, will be going into Haiti for the 50th uh, year jubilee uh, of the message that reached Haiti 50 years ago. And I was, uh, I was part of that uh, message, and I went into Haiti in those beginning years with Brother Nick Druitt, the great evangelist and missionary, a powerful man of God that planted this gospel in Haiti. And there are thousands upon thousands of people now that believe in Haiti, United States, and in the uh, Dominican Republic, and all through the different uh, Caribbean nations as a result of Brother Nick Druitt. One man planting the seed of the gospel in the, in, in the islands of the Caribbean. And he was a, was a Hungarian, a little man. I used to room with him when I was a young man 
before I uh, took a church in Illinois, and I was in my early 20s, and he and I roomed together. And he was a great man of God, and he was a wonderful fellow to just be friends with. And uh, he was on his way to this church when he died. Uh, suddenly, a year, a few years ago, I went to Africa and preached in Africa long before Brother Goodwin ever went there. And um, had a stroke in Africa while he was baptizing people in the river there in Africa. He got out of the water and prayed that God would keep him where he could keep traveling, doing missionary work. And he twisted his mouth, but he could still preach. He could still speak. And uh, he came out of that water and continued his work around the world, Romania, Hungary, uh, Hungary uh, in Europe, and in uh, the Caribbean. And so many of these people believe now. Now we're blessed to have several of them in our assembly Amen. here from the land of Haiti, from the beautiful land. It's a beautiful nation, uh, intelligent people, hardworking people, and uh, people that know how to take a little and make a lot out of it. Yes. And uh, very, very frugal. Um, and I appreciate the people of Haiti. I appreciate the people we have in our assembly here uh, from Haiti. Uh, they're a blessing to us. Uh, Sister Eustace, how long have you been with me here? Since 19, you and Brother Eustace, since 1990, 1991, you came, I believe, uh, to, the, to the assembly. 89, you came here uh, from New York, and they've been with us ever since. I appreciate the people of God. I appreciate the people of God. And so today, uh, we're going to, uh, we've been down in Miami working, and they're coming, and we need to get ready here in our assembly, and we need to shoulder the burden and take care of the needs financially. Uh, what was the offering last night, Sister Marlowe, Brother? We asked Brother May back here. Brother May, what was the offering last night? What was the offering, Brother Demon? About $600. $600. That's not a lot of money to operate a church on, is it? Not a lot of money to take care of a condition with, is it? Uh, so I'm going to ask every one of you, looking at you in the blue of the eye today, I want everyone to dig down deep, reach down to your checkbook, reach down uh, to your uh, giving, and um, Say, I'm going to give. Don't let a few people come and carry your burden out. What God wants you to do, uh, be faithful in giving. You eat at the table here. You live from, uh, there are many benefits people get uh, from living here and being in this assembly. And uh, we, uh, uh, I want you to feel the burden. I want you to feel the response of giving today. And like I said Wednesday night, you have to talk about giving to, to receive giving. Uh, you, can't, you can't be silent on that. You have to let people know that they're blessed to the Lord to give. Uh, write that check. Don't be ashamed to write that. Uh, don't, don't, I'm, someone said, aren't you afraid for tomorrow? You're going to hurt somebody's feeling? Hurt someone's feeling on giving? And when Christ gave it all on the cross? Amen. Hurt somebody's feelings? By saying, look, don't let me shoulder your giving. You, you, you reach down, and you're billful. You reach down in your checkbook and, and say, I'm going to get uh, because God has blessed me. I reach down into your pennies and, and know if I hurt your feelings when I'm talking about giving, you haven't received a good dose of the Holy Ghost. You need to get saved all over again. Amen. 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 If I hurt your feelings when I mention giving to God and giving what God has given you, um, if you walk in, um, if you walk in Arby's right now, order a classic roast beef uh, and a drink and curly fries, uh, you'll say they'll say eight dollars or eight fifty, and um, because you don't get that free. Well, the salvation someone said is free. It is free. It is free, but it costs. Yeah. It costs. It's free, but it costs. Uh, it costs Christ, of course. Uh, the greatest price that was ever paid, and we as followers. So we're going to receive a great offering today, a convention offering. I'm going to ask you to give beyond giving. Get ready for these people coming and uh, take care of them. So why do you want to have a convention, Brother Marlowe? Look, I never did believe if you lock your doors and you don't go out, 
You have nobody to be friends with you. Isolated and a church that loses its vision for people to come from everywhere and be a part of them and love God and be here and entertain them and love them, that church will wither and die. It'll, it'll, uh, it just like uh, the Bible said, he that had friends must first show himself friendly. Some people wonder, I don't have any friends. I don't have anybody who wants to talk to me. Do you talk to that many people? Uh, are, are you friendly? Do you go out of your way to be friendly? Do you, do you reach across the aisle? When, when church is over, you head for that door and that's it. Uh, uh, you get out as quick as you can. Um, go home and eat your butter and your jam and your bread. Uh, you know, uh, you, okay, okay, I'll go home and eat my butter and bread and jam by myself. Uh, no, uh, he that had friends must first show himself friendly. The church is to be the epitome of giving. I give myself till I can give no more. I'm going to love until there's just no more love. Amen. I'm going to give until there's just no more to give. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Because I have the greatest example you could ever have on the cross. Amen. He gave. He gave. Yes. And today I'm here standing saved and redeemed because Jesus did not withhold himself from giving. He gave his back to the lash. He gave his head to the crown of thorns. He gave his hands to the nails. He gave his side to the spear. He gave his feet to the nails. He gave his mother to his disciple. And finally he had nothing to give. And they took his robe and gambled for it. And there he was upon the cross without a garment even he gave. Praise the name of the Lord. I believe if I give, I will receive. If I give love, I will get love. If I give friendliness, I will get friendliness. If I give giving, I will get back. Praise our God. And to show you an example of that, uh, I was in Fort Lauderdale, and I was praying. I said, Lord, bless the church in Bradenton tonight. I won't get back there. And Lord, bless the offering. And Lord, bless the people. And Lord, let the church be rejuvenated. When I come home, let me get a great report of a great victory, a great revival, a great moving of the Spirit. And let uh, Sister Morrow tell me everybody was in church and nobody was missing. Everybody was here. And uh, I prayed that way. Well, God answers prayers different ways. And, and so uh, we were in the home of um, Brother uh, Bernard's uh, family. Brother, we visited their home. They did live in Bradenton and they moved back to Fort Lauderdale now. We were in the home having prayer with him, and um, uh, his brother, he's 61, is he 61? 61 years old? 51. I've got him 10 years up. Uh, my goodness. All right, he's 51. Uh, but uh, uh, anyway, he, he got a job with a concrete company. And if you've ever worked with a concrete company, you know if you're 51 years of age, it will make you feel 61. There's no question about that. It's hard work. And uh, so we were in the home praying, and I went out the door, and I was praying, Lord, supply the assembly with finance. Give us, Lord, help us. And he said, wait, Brother Marlowe, and he tapped me on the shoulder. Now, here's a brother that isn't here, but there's a $300 check going in the offering. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. He isn't even here. He's not even in the assembly uh, here. I was working for a concrete company, but there's $300. Yeah. Praise our God. Thank you. Amen. So I say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Do you believe God answers prayer from everywhere? Yeah. And anyway, do you believe God answers prayer? Do you believe God answers prayer? Yeah. I believe he does. It's $300. And uh, I thank the Lord for letting us go out on the field and uh, encourage these people mm -hmm. and visit these people and let them know we love them. And uh, so we're looking forward to a great meeting. And so we'll have that meeting Monday night of all the department heads and then 7.30, ushers, transportation. Be sure we got everybody on the line. And we need uh, three, he said, but we can use more than three. And we'll be here Monday night getting ready for that. Praise God. We want to welcome everybody here today. And we want you to know we love you. And if you're here for the first time, please don't be a stranger. 
uh, Gospel Tabernacle is your church. We want you to come. If you're a young man, young woman, if you're a couple, uh, if you're children that sing, we want you to sing. Uh, if you're uh, looking for God to enlarge your heart in the Word, we hope the lesson we'll receive today will uh, be good for you. And uh, we'll just have a great time in the Lord. And we don't want you to be a visitor after today. We want you to come and find out what you can do to help us grow. And we can do what we can do to help you grow as children of God together. Praise the name of the Lord. We want our church to be warm and inviting. We want it to be friendly. And we want the church to be open for God's people to come from every place without respect of person. Yes. There will be choir practice at 730 also. Pardon me? There will be choir practice at 730. And there will be choir practice, so 730 is choir mm -hmm. practice. If tomorrow has that. That's next to your last one, isn't it? Uh, that will be next to your last choir practice. So at 7.30 with the choir, uh, we'll be in, in uh, practice, and all of you come, and then we'll separate you. If you're in the uh, parking transportation, right. we'll separate you into the choir very early, so that won't conflict at all. All right, we're going to uh, pray uh, for Sister Mary Gay's family, her daughter, her son, and uh, we're going to pray for the Brother Don Merriman. I just left Manatee Memorial. Uh, a few minutes late coming into the service. I uh, was at the hospital, and Brother Don Merriman is there in the hospital, and he's not doing well. Uh, he needs prayer. Brother Don Merriman needs prayer. Needs strength from God. He's at Manatee Memorial, and I believe they're going to admit him. Uh, so we'll pray for Brother Don Merriman, one of our ministers here in the church, and ask God to help him today and the family. Uh, Cammy, Manny, and uh, many of the family surrounding. Uh, let's pray for them. Uh, I know others may be missing that are ill. Do you have anybody? Does anybody know? Elders know uh, of someone that is missing and ill? Marla, I saw Michelle this morning. She's awaiting a test tomorrow. All right, she's Michelle. Michelle Morland? No. Oh, I mean, uh, Michelle. Eason. 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 She's in Blake. Michelle Eason. And Blake, um, all right, let's remember Sister Michelle, uh, one of our band members in Blake Hospital today, awaiting to test. There was someone else over here, Brother Don. Um, Pastor Verde in Orlando, he lost one of his saints on Friday. A young man about my age went to work Friday morning, and somehow the, yeah, the equipment he was working on, to an incident happened, and he died in the scene. Oh, my. And we were in Orlando, that assembly a couple of weeks ago. In Orlando, the assembly there, full gospel assembly, Brother Verley Lunar, the pastor, lost a young man in a tragic accident. Let's pray for the assembly. You don't know them, but that's all right, God does. And you pray and believe God now here. Brother Terry. Uh, Bill's really, really sick. All right, let's pray for Brother Bill Schoen. Uh, Brother Bill has a lot of sickness. We want to. Pray that God will help him, uh, give him uh, healing in his body, and strengthen him. I'll write up another hand, but down here, Sister Karen. Matthew Hantley, her husband, uh, they're making a medical decision. Pray for Matthew, uh, her husband. I I I'm sorry, I didn't get Beverly's comment. There. Oh, well, uh, I was commenting on Karen. <coughs> Matthew, uh, they're trying to decide whether they're going to take his leg, but his he is his mind is very. Yes, yeah, so we very visited confused. him. And we know the and condition. If anybody is going near the hospital sometime this week. Uh, I'm sure the pastor will give them our phone number. Karen needs transportation down to the hospital. She hasn't even been able to talk to the doctors yet. Call the office of the church, Karen, tomorrow morning. All right. Brother Pablo? Thank you. Sister Louise Patterson, yes. Patterson. She fell last week and she broke her ribs, so she's under a lot of pain. 
Louise Patterson, one of our longtime people here, fell, broke her ribs, so call her name in prayer. All right. That's, that's Steve's across the assembly, and there are others as well. Sister, go back here, Sister Laura. Say that again, Laura. Her son, Luke. Her, your son, Luke. All right. All right, let's remember her son, Luke. Fine young man. He plays here in the band, in our church, and we want to remember him today. Praise God. Praise God. Keep people like Brother Barry White in prayer. We don't call their names often. It's called Sister Frost's name. I was down to see them a few days ago. Brother Frost is here today. And these ones that can't get into service, Barbara Hines, um, people out in the nursing homes and elderly can't get in. Let's pray for them. Sister Leona. Sister Lisa Frost today. All right. I think I know a little bit about that need, and let's pray for that request. Lisa Frost. Uh, Sister Marlowe. Let's remember Brother Gerald. Brother Gerald Atkinson? Yes, we miss him, don't we, today? One of our elders, long time elders. Uh, another hand. Who had Brother Rob? Uh, pray for my family. Uh, my grandmother's uh, passing is near. It's a traumatic moment for you, and we'll pray for your family, and the passing of the grandmother seemed to be near. That's, that's a moment you need prayer. Brother Wallace. Sister Judy of uh, Shaw and uh, Sister Jan Wallace. Yes. And my brother and his family got a lot of sickness up in Tennessee. Tennessee. All right. Uh, let's pray for them. All right. We have many, don't we have many needs to pray for? Yeah. And I, I, oh, I never rush this right here. The church needs to feel each other. We need to hear names called. We, 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 don't, we don't need to be so impersonal. We rush through a prayer service and we don't call names. And, uh, you may not know them, but you will know them. If you stay in the church here and come and go, you'll, you'll find out uh, these people and their needs. I see Sister Pat, did you missing over here? Anyone know uh, why she's missing? All right, uh, let's pray for her, that God will be with her, and Dickie Eason also over here. Uh, they're on the ground here. All right, can we rise up, children of God, and go to prayer? And everyone pray. Let's go do anything but pray. Rise up right now in the name of Jesus, and yeah, let's pray. Everyone give honor to God. Uh, bring our minds together. Bring our thoughts together. Father, we come together right now in one mind and one accord, and we pray for the people of God. We pray for the sick. We pray for the afflicted. Uh, we pray for those that might be missing. We pray for those in hospitals and nursing homes. Uh, uh, we pray for the elderly. Uh, we pray for the cripples. Uh, we pray for those that are young, but they have a need. Uh, our young men, our young women. Uh, we pray for families, and, and we pray for the elderly that have fell and hurt themselves. Uh, we pray for those that have afflictions of illness in their body of any kind. And we know that regardless if we call the name or not, but we have, we have called the name of these children of God. And we as the church are concerned. And we love them. And we're praying for them. And we're asking you to help them and to come down into their lives. The Lord bless them lift them up and give them grace and uh, give them honor, Lord, and give them mercy, oh God, that we might be the children of God uh, without blemish or without fail or without failure, but we know the power of God is in the blood of Christ, and, and we know the blood of Christ is, is the energizing, healing balm of Gilead for the church today. We pray the blood of Christ will be so heavy in our church here until it will bathe everyone. Everyone will be bathed in the love of God. Oh God, the, uh, the congregation will literally explode today with praise and with joy. And uh, we'll feel 
the imprint of your hand upon us, Lord, and the ground here will vibrate with the care of the mighty God, and we'll leave this place filled with the Spirit, filled with a desire, filled with a desire to be Christian and to live on this earth and to walk godly in Christ Jesus. We pray, Lord, that you will look upon every need, every heart, and then look upon our troubled nation and be, uh, Lord, be merciful in the winter storm, in the cold, the ice, the snow. Uh, Lord, uh, be merciful to the nation. Uh, look into our politics uh, and let honest men and honest women take government and lead us as a nation. We pray, Lord. We pray for those in authority. We pray. We pray, Lord, for our military. We pray for our men and women and please their life on the line. We pray for everyone to be filled with the Spirit and able to withstand Satan and all of his passes. In the name of Jesus, we enter your courts with thanksgiving. We come into your gates with praise. Lord, we enter your court with thanksgiving. We come into your gates with praise. We come into your gates with praise. We, we enter into your gates with praise. We come into your courts with thanksgiving. We are joyful. We are happy. We are giving. We are tough to you, Lord. And we pray, we pray that you'll accept our sacrifice in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And everybody said amen. Praise the Lord. You come to give your offering in a moment. Uh, they'll prepare some music for us. You prepare your offering. But turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's really good to be with you today. <laughs> praise God. Praise God. Neighbor, it's really good to be with you today. Neighbor, it's really good to be with you today. Amen. 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 It's really good to be with you, neighbor. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Amen, amen, amen.